So now as this code showcases a pair of devs slowly putting together a masterpiece, chiseling away at the marble of code to produce the sculpture we love and adore today. However, some parts of their method and the past of the project still remain in the corners of the code, and today we're going to be talking about some of those remnants. Searching around the code, one will eventually find lost assets and storyboards that never made it to the current game, and that's going to be the focus of today's video. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. So this video will kind of serve as a capstone on the cut content series, covering the last bit of cut content we find within the game that I find to be relevant enough for a video. So let's start off with, well, the start of the game. We can begin with searching the penhole scene, this being the scene after the penrose where we descend down into a hole, thus, thus the name. And this scene includes the code room sequence, it includes the hole, it includes the walking. But if you like look around, you can find a cut storyboard file that showcases a original plan cut to Issa in the intro cut scene that would have shown her at S23 in a weakened state. You can see a rendered version of this where we likely would have seen Issa sat down on the ground, as if you just mess around with the files, you can actually toggle that. In the actual game, we got a very similar scene, with the key difference being our version doesn't have Issa. This scene isn't of major importance, and seeing as it likely would have just been one or two frames and a slightly edited version of an intro cutscene we already got, it was just honestly a minor removal. It was likely removed due to us not meeting Issa yet. In earlier versions of the game, Issa seemed to have played a larger role in Impact, and thus this intro would have made more sense. But in the form we got at the current moment, having or not having Issa here honestly doesn't matter either way, so removing her isn't that big of a deal. The next thing is an old door puzzle concept, that interestingly enough also appears to be a concept within the code of the Penrose. This door would have used an entry code quite similar, at least, at least from what I can tell, to the entry code that we have in the Penrose already for the hatch where you use the photo in the back of it and the pattern to open it. Um, it most likely is a earlier version or concept of that puzzle because the devs most likely kept moving it around trying to find an appropriate spot for it to go. That's why it's both in the Penrose and in the uh, re-edge in the code. It is also possible that this is an earlier concept of what the lock key puzzle would have been, seeing as the doors are kind of similar. The code around this door, though, is heavily stripped, and restoring it is honestly not possible in its current state. So I can't really guess what it actually was like, why it was removed, and just that the puzzle concept kind of seems to exist in different forms elsewhere. From here we can head back to Re-Edge again, and find another interesting room. So, observation. A lot of people think this is a cut room. My working theory is that it isn't. It's a template room that I think was used by Yuri and Babs to create the effect of viewing a room beneath us that exists, seeing as the main notable feature of this room is the underfloor, and then it's named observation, which also hints to that. Uh, and we do have, within Re-Edge, floors that let you see to DET, that work a lot like this room, so I feel like this was just their working template to figure out how to do that. There is a possible star spawn in here though, as well as a category of objects within that are called Love Tutorial. The exact meaning of all that is likely lost to the developmental drawing room forever. I have really no idea why a template room would have enemy spawns or a category of objects that have anything to do with a tutorial. But it is an interesting slice of the game to take a little look into, and I'm another random strange thing with this room. The door of this room is uh, called a medical door. It's labeled with the Chinese word for hospital. So I'm not really sure what's going on here as it is labeled DET or LOV in its inner items. So really zero reason why it should have something from MED or medical, but whatever. For our last major thing of note hidden in the seams of the code, we have the old surgery room. This room is quite different than the current surgery room we got, the current surgery room being the one where we fight Myina. This one features more of a torture type aesthetic, with a torture chair being here, as well as observation chairs flanking the main area, and also some type of lighting that is honestly more ominous than the bright whites of surgery we actually got. Next to the torture chair stands Adler. 
And this is kind of where my thoughts on what this room is start to come together. This makes me think that this room would have been a cutscene room. Most likely, we would have cut to see something happening in this room with Adler. What exactly? When exactly? No clue. I have no idea when anywhere in medical there could have been a cutscene to Adler doing something in this room. And even if it wasn't a cutscene and was an actual room, I have zero clue when this could have occurred. Yeah, it could have occurred at the end of, you know, regular surgery when we jump down and fight Miana. Instead, we jump down and see Adler. But even then, it wouldn't really make a ton of sense for us to fight Adler here or, you know, talk to Adler here. I, I don't know. I'm curious what you all think. What could be the reason for removal? I don't think this is a matter of removal, and I think it's more of a different ideas changing way early in development for surgery, and then they just scrap this idea for the Myina fight, which I think is a much better idea, because I think we kind of did need a boss fight, and the Myina fight is awesome, and I don't think an Adler cutscene or Adler interact would have been better than Myina. There's another small thing I feel like bringing up in this video. In the shower rooms of DET, there's actually an object called pool. This object is disabled. It likely indicates a pool of water from the showers. Only thing that really confuses about me is that there is a swim FX connected to it, when zero things in the game have any swim animations or really anything close to that at all. This likely could just be some fancy name for it, but what if at one point in development the devs actually did intend water activities of some sort? I, I'd be very curious as to how, or where, or why. I honestly have no clue, but if you enable this object and you drag it upwards, it's, it's literally just water. It just makes things look flooded, so I have no idea what's going on with any of that. That I feel like we're looking way too far back into the code when it comes to that item. Overall, it is fun to explore the code and uncover lost parts of the game that the devs crafted long ago, but ultimately couldn't find a spot for. If y'all like this series, I may cover the older builds that the devs showcased, but we really never got a chance to play in the future. But for now, this is all I've got. If you'd like to talk to more Signalis players, my Discord, Volk Secret and Lore, or VSL, is linked below. It's a cool place, and you joining it would honestly make it even cooler. I spend a lot of time there in VCs or just sharing ideas and concepts I come up with as well as whenever I data mine something, I will usually send it there first for talk to people about what we think it might be. But uh, that is all from me for today. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope to see you all, well, next time.